All righty, everyone. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah and welcome back to another day, day number 23 of Ramadan 360 with Al Maghrib Institute. Jazakumullah khair to those of you who've been consistent, incredibly so, for the past 23 days, more than three weeks, and coming up to a month soon that we've been spending together. May Allah accept from you all. And welcome, welcome, welcome back to another beautiful session. Today, we're going to be having Sheikh Amara Shukri back with us. And I think it's been a minute since he's been with us through Ramadan 360's like official session, if I'm not mistaken. Because I know we had Sheikh Ammar right in the beginning. Um, and then maybe in like the first week or so. And we've been seeing him in the webinars. We've been seeing him a lot on the YouTube series, mashallah, tabarakallah. But we haven't had him back for a full session in a minute. So it's a pleasure as always to have him with us. Alhamdulillah. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullah ilham. Aisha. Uh, welcome, welcome, Jalila from the Philippines, Myri, please forgive me if I butcher any of your names, Hafsa T, the other Hafsa T, um, Basleen, of course, our amazing staff member um, from the student support team, Nemo, Jazakum Khair, everyone for being here. As always, it's hard to maintain the consistency of not only being in the session, but being early, mashallah. So sh shout out to all of you guys who make that extra bit of effort and, and have that eagerness towards seeking knowledge and being in this beautiful community. I've just switched the settings so you guys should be able to turn on your cameras and uh, join me with your beautiful faces on screen. So please uh, feel free to do so, inshallah. Hafsa coming in from Italy. There's a Hafsa in Italy, mashallah. Welcome to the session, Hafsa. I wish I were you uh, and in your shoes right now, but no, alhamdulillah. How are you guys doing in terms of energy? I don't know if you can tell by the dark circles, but I think we're all kind of hanging on with these, the start of the last 10 nights. May Allah give us energy. May Allah give us the, the ability to worship him with excellence and accept from us, ameen. I know it's it's uh, hard to maintain uh, that that level of sanity, and I feel like uh, but the speakers have said it. Brother of the Rahman, who's with me on screen, Mashal has said it before. Ustad Samia has said it that you sometimes you feel so exhausted before a Ramadan 360 session. You're like, I don't know how I'm going to do it today. And then Subhanallah, you you see the community, you feel the energy, you feel the five o'clock, you know, is coming up, and then all of a sudden it just it works out. Subhanallah, it just it, so somehow there's some barakah in your in your energy, and it comes all the way back. Alhamdulillah. Jazakumullah khair for Celine for dropping the links, of course, to our WhatsApp and Telegram groups for our important reminders and any interactions. I owe you guys a couple of links, by the way, there on Telegram. I haven't forgotten. Um, I have to get to them. I know there was um, some links to the clear Quran and a few different versions of that, some things that the, the shiuch have said. So if there's anything that you're looking for that I may have missed, let me know, inshallah, and I'll make sure that we put a post together and share everything that you uh, that, that has been that has been missing. Rabia, jazakumullah khair. That's very kind of you to say. Um, so today is going to be day number 23 of Ramadan 360. Um, I don't know if that means we're on the seventh day or we have seven days left. My math is never my strong suit, but Alhamdulillah, um, the topic today is going to be excellence. As I mentioned with Sheikh Amara Shukri, of course, Ramadan 360 is an Amal Group Institute experience where our goal has been for the last 22 years to make Islam easy and accessible and provide you with this authentic knowledge in a way that you can relate to in a way that's personal for you. And not only is this topic uh, relevant, but Sheikh Ammar Shukri is the, is the best example of someone who makes Islamic knowledge so 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 practical, so easy, so so relevant to our experience. And I, I'm sure a lot of you have experienced that just through following along and getting a taste of that through the Names of Allah series. Um, I was binging that once again, we're watching a lot of episodes last night, just a reminder that launches at 3 p.m. EST roundabout every single day. And today's name is Al Quddus that has just launched. Um, but mashallah, Sheikh Ammar has a way of just like using some contemporary examples, using humor, using like slang and all that kind of stuff. And then just some real proper, authentic knowledge and merging it together in the best way possible. So I hope that you've been benefiting from him as an instructor in Ramadan 360 and poetry. Yes, he has a way with words that's just, mashallah, exceeds every, uh, you know, everything, subhanAllah. But that said, which by the way, he's a poet and he's a, he's also got a book out uh, called What the Pen Wrote, which is his collection of poetry. If you guys ever want to benefit more from it or, or see the full collection of it, if you've enjoyed Brits and Pieces, I highly recommend that you check that out. I believe it's available on Amazon, alhamdulillah. Um, that said, for those who are still newish or who've been coming coming in and out or who've been missing the intros and who are not as familiar with Sheikh Amar, he's actually a director at a Maghrib Institute. He started from the very bottom as a student, as a volunteer, then an Amir, which is a, a president of one of our chapters in the city of New York. And then, mashallah, he worked his way up through education, through knowledge, through perseverance as an instructor. Uh, and he has, that's why he has all these stories of, of pursuing you know people of knowledge and asking them questions and engaging with them that you've seen on his YouTube series and in some of his talks. Uh, he's got a dual dual bachelor's in Islamic studies and marketing. And he is 
uh, mashallah, really heavily taught around the Amagra world. So he teaches classes on site. He teaches classes. He's got an ilm night launching very soon that you want to look out for, inshallah. He teaches a couple classes on His Majesty, the Names of Allah, which is the in-depth version of what you've been kind of hearing or experiencing through the YouTube series, which I highly recommend. It's linked in your student portal. And I believe you get like a sweet discount to it as well if you're a registered Ramadan 360 student. So look out for that. There's like a third section after your resources section where you can find that and you can find behind the scenes with Sheikh Omar Sinaman as well. And of course, Sheikh Omar has his famous class that I mentioned, I think it was yesterday or the day before with Usada Taymiyyah on mindfulness in Salah, which is a life-changing experience. If you, as most, most Muslims do at some point in their life, struggle with having khushu in your Salah, struggle with like dialing in and finding that sweetness and that richness in your Salah and that relationship that you have with your creator during that time, it is incredible. And I go back to it. It's like a salve. You go back to it whenever you're struggling, whenever you're, you're, you're not finding that, that richness in your Salah. And it's such an amazing experience. Those who've taken it are like raving fans, mashallah. And finally, Sheikh Amar takes some of the most famous trips that we have with Al-Maghrib's Blessed Voyage Tharbiya travel experiences to Umrah. He used to take them to Al-Aqsa, inshallah. Inshallah, those can get revived soon. May Allah free Al-Aqsa, ameen. Um, but he's an incredible group leader when it comes to travel. He somehow makes a bunch of strangers from different walks of life, different ages, different stages, everything, uh, into best friends immediately. That's like one of his amazing strengths. And everyone who takes a Blessed Voyage Umrah like puts it on their resume, basically, <laughs> uh, because they're so amazing they're so like excited about that experience that they've been able to, to to be able to facilitate um that we've been able to facilitate alhamdulillah Faslin just dropped that link by the way there's i don't know if there's anything available op open for blessed voyage right now but keep an eye out because um i know there are some exciting things that are launching soon sheikh yasser Burjas teased a little bit about his trip to bosnia that's upcoming inshallah late this summer and sheikh amar will soon be uh, announcing some trips as well. So just keep an eye out there. If you but if you like to travel, if you're a travel bug like me and you like to kind of see the world and you want to have a balance of an Islamic perspective and have some tharbiya and some uh, and a beautiful community to go with, inshallah, you are absolutely going to love the Blessed Voyage of Umrah experiences. With that said, I know we're just a little bit past the clock. I'm not sure if Sheikh is, I saw him, him come in already. So apologies if I've been speaking over you, Sheikh. Um, we're going to get started just very briefly. Once again, for those who come a little bit later, day number 23 of Ramadan 360. The topic is excellence. Uh, and I want to shout out again. And I really want to thank you guys because mashallah, when we said we're going to exceed their goals, we hit that out of the park, subhanAllah, with Forgotten Women's uh, subhanAllah fundraising yesterday for the people of Gaza for the food packs and hygiene packs and like necessity kits that they were fundraising for, mashallah, tabarakallah. Shout out to all of you who are part of that experience. I, I'm just, I'm so honored. And I, I it's always something that I'm, I have such so much confidence in because I know when this community comes together, we wow ourselves, we exceed our own expectations. So please continue to give to them and to all the other charity sponsors who, who are doing honestly all the hard work on the ground. It is beyond difficult to, as I mentioned before, to part people with their hard earned money and to give it to those who know you need who need it desperately and urgently, especially in the situation that we're in right now with our ummah and with the people in Palestine. Alhamdulillah, there's so much good. They were just sending me a picture uh, yesterday. The charity was that, or Forgotten Woman was, of uh, a medical unit that they've just opened up. And one of you, those of you who donated to that specific uh, tier that they had available for their Launch Good fundraiser is they've just opened it up yesterday and now they're they're already in action, mashallah, tabarakallah. So the work happens so, so, so quickly. Uh, so I'm so proud of us to be able to, to contribute to that and please continue to do so whatever you have the capacity for as many times as you're asked, inshallah. Alhamdulillah that we have that capacity as a community to come together. And if you don't, or you're a little stretched thin, then share it with others as well. And the same goes for a uh donation campaign that we've launched, of course, for the last 10 nights. I know you guys have been amazing with Give Daily, um, but if you want to maximize your evening times and you want to make sure that you catch the uh, you know the night of the Qadr with your donations, please make sure that you check out amagrib.org forward slash donate. And for the Brits, I know there's like a give something Okay, I've forgotten what the name of that is, where they give match or something that they have. Uh, we're going to be linking that as well in Shotla so that you guys are able to uh, support through that and get, you know, maximize your donations as a gift aid. That's what it is. Jazakallah khair. Our resident Brit slash Canadian slash America Ridwana has clarified for me. Alhamdulillah. Um, I see that Sheikh Omar is with us. So uh, without further ado, I don't want to delay our session. Sheikh Omar and his, what was it, Fern? What 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 uh, piece of greenery was that? I don't know. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Sheikh Omar, how you doing? Today on this fine Tuesday. Can you hear me okay? Yes, we can hear you. <clears throat> we can hear you okay, Sheikh, but you're a little crooked uh, in terms crooked. of the, the camera view. I mean, you're straight, Sheikh, but your camera view is looking 
Okay, so let me do this. Let me do this. If my camera is crooked, let me not mm -hmm. knock over my camera. But okay, Bismillah. This oh 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 we're getting there. How's that? Better. Okay. Better. I'm yeah, it'll do, it'll do. It. I'm 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 okay with it. The social media team or somebody else is probably going to point someone out. But this looks nice and even. Alhamdulillah. As long as you lean your head, I should be. Yes, I exactly. Be fine. We can just do that. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. All right, Sheikh. How are you feeling going into the last ten nights? Twenty third night over down for most of us, subhanallah, or those of us in the in the West. Um, how are you feeling? What's the energy like? And and uh, what are your thoughts so far? I feel good, alhamdulillah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts from us all. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, you just want to make sure that you show your best over the next couple of nights. And uh, don't listen to all the people who are like, oh, Laylatul Qadr was last night. Yeah. We still got a lot of Ramadan left, people. A lot of Ramadan left. Absolutely. Good advice, Sheikh. Let's jump into your session so that we can start to benefit, inshallah, and we'll be there. I'm, the I'm hoping to delay it so I can take more of Ustad Atamiya's time. Oh, no. That's the goal. Astaghfirullah. That's, she's in the uh, session, you know? Ustad Atamiya comes in from the beginning. So she oh, knows when she? the speaker starts, mashallah. She's, she doesn't she's miss probably it. here before I am. Okay. <laughs> so All we're right. keeping to 30 minutes then, right? Inshallah. Tayyib, um, our... Alhamdulillah, wa salatu salamu ala rasulillah, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim sallim kathira. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah, ahadahu la sharika lah, wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu rasuluh. Salatu wa sarabbi wa salamu alayhi. So our topic is ihsan. And we have the famous hadith, which is a pillar. Two hadith that are pillars. Number one is, of course, the hadith of Jibreel, where uh, it's reported by Muslim, where... Jibreel asked the Prophet وسلم, of a number of things. What is Islam? What is Iman? What is Ihsan? And the Prophet وسلم, when he was asked about Ihsan, he said, To worship Allah as if you see him and if you don't see him, to know that he sees you. So we're going to come back to this inshallah ta'ala in a little bit. But this is a cornerstone when it comes to Tazkiyah and Muraqabah and taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we know how important those things are because we've talked about them in Ramadan 360. But number two, you have the hadith of Shaddad ibn Aus, which is also reported by Muslim, in which the Prophet sallallahu he simply says, Inna Allah katab al-ihsan ala kulli shay. Allah has written ihsan over everything. Allah has written ihsan. And so the question that scholars ask, is this a statement that is khabariya or is it insha'iya? This statement where the Prophet wasallam says that Allah has prescribed, Allah has written ihsan over everything. Is it khabar, i.e. is it the Prophet wasallam simply telling us of the laws that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed in the universe? Like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, kataba ala nafsihi rahma, Allah has prescribed upon himself mercy meaning that is the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala deals with his creation. So you're talking about something that has already been established or is it in sha'iyya, is it a command? Where, for example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya yuha ladina amnu, kutiba alaykum usiyam. Fasting has been prescribed for you. So is it a command to have ihsan? Is it a command for the people to have ihsan? Which one is it? And it could be both. It could simply be both. And we see that through the different hadith, inshallah ta'ala, that we'll explore. But when it comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala having written ihsan over everything, you see that this world that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created is one that has been created excellently. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala challenges us in Surah Al-Mulk. He says, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala challenges us to look out in the world and see Do you see any, any glitches? Do you see any mistakes? Do you see any discrepancies? Do you see any, anything wrong in the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? You know, everything that we create, there is some sort of deficiency. Even the video game worlds that we create, you have glitches. You go into this world, this level, and you, you end up exiting in the wrong level. That's never happened to you, where you walked into an airport here in Houston, Texas, and by mistake, you ended up just, there's a glitch in the matrix and you ended up being in Cairo. That doesn't happen. There's never been a moment in time where the laws of physics glitched for you or the laws of, of chemistry glitched for you. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created this universe perfectly. There are no mistakes in it. So that's one aspect. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created this world with ihsad. But then there's also the other aspect of our doing and our working with ihsan. Our working with ihsan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ihsan for us. I'm going to get to how we interact with ihsan in a little bit. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ihsan for us is even in our calamities. Even when we experience what we're experiencing now in the Muslim world. Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu, he says, and it's a beautiful statement. He says that there has never been a calamity that has befalled me except that in, included in that calamity are four blessings. Four blessings included in every calamity. Number one, the first one, is that it was not in my deen. That's the first. Number two, he says, that I am not stripped of contentment for it. That I am not stripped of contentment for it. Number three, he says, that I seek reward from it. And number four, that it was not bigger than it was. These four are ways that Umar radiallahu anhu experiences calamities and recognizes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's blessings in those calamities. Number one, that it's not in a person's deen. Any calamity that befalls a person's wealth and their, 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 their loss of, of health, all of that, as long as their deen is okay, then they're okay. That's number one, he says. And then number two is that it wasn't bigger than it was. It could always be bigger. It could always be more people that are lost. It could always be more, more, more ailments, uh, more frailty, more weakness, more, uh, more loss of wealth. It could always be bigger. And then number three, he says that I am not stripped of contentment with it. You know, this statement of inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun is an incredibly powerful statement. It is worth billions of dollars in mental, uh, in, in, in mental uh, health. This statement, inna lillahi wa inna that I can go through the greatest losses of my life and I can simply say, as I've lost a loved one, we all belong to Allah and we're all going to return to him. They don't belong to me in the first place. It's not my loved one. They belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before they belong to me. And so, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. He says that, I, and, and that's a statement of contentment, that I'm content with whatever this loss is. And then number four is that I'm seeking reward in it. You know, the, the, the dua of Allahumma ajirni fi musibati wa khilifni khayra minha. Oh Allah, reward me, like Um Salama said. Reward me in my calamity and replace me with what is better than it. And she could not imagine anyone better than Abu Salama, but she married Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who is better. But the idea here is the statement of, oh Allah, reward me in my calamity. Everything that happens to a believer is good for them. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Everything that happens to the believer is good, but that's only for the believer. And so the question that people ask when they say, do bad things, why do bad things happen to good people? The answer to that is to look them in the face and say, bad things don't happen to good people. Why? Because the Prophet wasalam, said that. He said, everything that happens to a believer is good. It's not that the believer does not experience that which is painful or unpleasant, but the believer's experience with that thing that is painful or unpleasant transforms that experience to be something that is rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so in the end, it is good for them. And so Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu says, the fact that I seek its reward is a blessing as I experience any calamity. And so how do we, how do we, how do we engage this concept of ihsan? How do we be of the muhsineen whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves? Number one, it is, and I'll mention inshallah ta'ala, uh, four quick qualities. Four quick qualities. The first is uh, ihsan with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Ihsan with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your worship of Allah. How do you show excellence? You know, and when Ihsan was explained to me, one of my favorite explanations was given by my Sunday school teacher back in the day. And I, every time I see him until now, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve him. You know, I tell him and I say, you know, do you remember this example you gave of Ihsan in Sunday school? And, you know, I don't think he even remembers me, to be honest, from Sunday school. But I remember that example. And that's also a shout out to our Sunday school teachers, you know, these unruly high school kids and middle school kids that you think, you know, nothing is sticking with them. 
it's very possible that something sticks to them. And alhamdulillah, a number of things stuck with me, although a lot, obviously, I was definitely unruly and a pain. But this example, he said, he was explaining Ihsan. He said, your parents ask you for a cup of water. You can go and get them a cup of water. Or you can decide that you're going to do better. And so you're going to put ice in that cup because you know that they like their water chilled. And you can still do better than that. You can go put that water on a tray and you can serve them on that tray. And that is more ihsan. That is doing it with doing it better. And if they say to you, why did you bring me this water in a and a cup and a tray, you could say you're, 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 you know, you deserve a cup and a tray lifestyle. You're not a water bottle life. You're not a water bottle mom. You deserve a cup and a tray. Although Ihsan is also, fair warning, Ihsan is also that you don't leave the tray there in front of her and go back upstairs, you know, leaving her with the tray and the cup for her to wash those things and put them back in the dish. No, 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 no. Ihsan is for you to take care of it all. Five-star service. Otherwise, it becomes a nuisance. It becomes a headache. So the idea here is just doing more and more and more that you can. And so when Aisha Allah has asked about the salah of the Prophet Sallallahu she was asked about the number. How many rak'ahs does the Prophet pray? And she said, he prays 11. But don't ask about husnihin na wa tulihin. Don't ask about how beautiful they are. And don't ask about how long they are. The Prophet Sallallahu salah was so beautiful. It was so long. It was so metered. It was so... It was so present. Don't ask about how beautiful it was. And Aisha radiallahu anha, she learned, she learned salah, she learned worship from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa And so Aisha radiallahu anha, she learned ihsan from Rasulullah. And so when she would give sadaqah, when she would give gold coins or silver coins, what did she do? She used to anoint them with, 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 uh, with fragrance. She would anoint them with fragrance when she would give them to the person who is asking. And she would say, they fall in the hands of Allah before they fall in the hands of the person receiving it. And that is amazing ihsan that comes from intentionality and being conscious of worshiping Allah as if you see him. And so the question then becomes, how do we increase our ihsan? How do we increase the beauty of our worship? When you recognize that the one you're dealing with is not this poor person that you're giving money to, the one you're dealing with is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you're standing and you're remembering that the one you're standing in front of is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that you worship Allah as if you see him. And so my question for you, very briefly, because I don't want this to be a, a crazy long monologue, but I want to ask you um, four acts of worship. Let's say salah. Let's say uh, charity in Ramadan, of course. Let's say fasting. Actually, let's just keep it to these three. How can you increase the level of ihsan in these three acts of worship? So take these three as an exercise. How do I increase the ihsan of my salah? How do I increase the ihsan of my, uh, my fasting? And how do I increase the ihsan of my charity? You're not going to be able to anoint a gold coin right now. All of us, we're all making donations through our phones. That's how we're making our donations. So the question that I have for you is how do we make that more beautiful? How do we make that more beautiful? Okay. Also, if you don't mind jumping back on and just reading some of these answers, I'm just going to plug my laptop into my uh, charger. here. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, I don't know if we have someone can, if we can do it in like 10, 15 seconds, you guys can also raise your hands and share on, on the mic, inshallah, in that time. Mashallah, so many amazing, so many amazing. Oh, I saw a hand and then I, I lost it. Um, all right, Sister Bilkis, 10 seconds. Go right ahead. Bismillah. Um, if it comes to Salah, I'll prepare myself properly and uh, like uh, SubhanAllah, leaving the best clothes for Salah, buying the best jilbab to pray when mm -hmm. I have to pray, especially for Ramadan, making sure that this is the best jilbab, this is the, my jilbab for Ramadan and uh, preparing uh, the, the room where I'm praying as well, make sure it smells good. So inshallah, when the malaika come, it doesn't smell of food and uh, it smell it smell beautiful. Right. And uh, the prayer mat as well, making sure that uh, everything is clean and above all, preparing my heart. Mashallah. That my heart is connected with Allah and preparing the Quran that Ya Allah, I'm doing that and correct me, Ya Allah, if I'm wrong, if there's anything I'm doing wrong, guide me and protect me. That's mm -hmm. first Allah. And leave the rest of the others, inshallah.
Jazakumullah khair. He's a beautiful, beautiful reflection, mashallah. Um, let's do one more. Let's do Sister Nima. I think that is. Go right ahead. Assalamu uh, alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. So for Salah, I feel like since we're in Ramadan, we can actually uh, increase our Salah at night times, especially uh, in the last 10 days and increase our Quran recitation. So our uh, Salah will become fulfilled with Zikr, Quran recitation, night prayer. I'm sorry Beautiful. for my son. So uh, yeah, all of those together. And for, Zak uh, for Zakah or charity, we... When we give the charity, I'm so sorry he's screaming. That's okay. That's so, okay. We can't so turn for the, back our noise. Keep going. <laughs> so for the charity, we can like, uh, you know, what your right hand gives, the left hand shouldn't know. So we can give in uh, secrecy. So that in increases it as well. So Amazing. the fasting, of course, do it with taqwa. So. Jazakumullah khairhan. That was perfect. Great reminders, mashallah. And you hit on, on several several points. Even from yesterday, that was mentioned uh, as a reflection as well. Give from your, you know, with your right hand, your left hand doesn't even know. Um, what do you call it? I see some great ones in the chat as well, mashallah. Let's see if we can take a couple of these, uh, if I can read them out um, as well. I see some some folks who are echoing some of your sentiments as well, mashallah. Um, to do the action with the knowledge that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching. Beautiful going the extra mile to make the acts more perfect, to add extra ingredients, mashallah, with ikhlas and tawakkul, mashallah. Um, let's see, how to help others and visit the sick, pe sick people during your fasting. That's such a great reminder is to add on the good deeds, stack them up while you're fasting. Sometimes we get tired or we're trying to just make it through the day and we take we we we, we don't engage the, with the community. We don't engage with those who are maybe not having company in their fasting as well. SubhanAllah, that's great, mashallah. Let's see. Someone said, Paris said for Salah, uh, ironing and steaming what you wear so that you, to, so that you can pray in it. Um, fasting, starting and breaking the fast without overeating. Great reminder there. Charity giving it as an odd number since Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves what, it odd, what is odd. Mashallah. Amazing job there. Um, let's see. Sorry, I have my my chat is is needs to be scrolled up a little bit because mashallah, so many of you guys have commented before that. Um, Lila says for Salah, preparing ahead and grooming for the prayer. Mashallah. Um, who else? Um, Sumeya says fasting by fasting from haram with all your senses. So avoiding haram from all your senses, being very diligent about that, doing it purely for Allah's sake. Um, Christine says to have full concentration and khushu, mashallah. Great, great reflections, everyone. Mashallah, I see uh, Sheikh Omar is back as well with us. So let's continue the rest of the session. But that was a great impromptu Quran reflect. You guys are ready for, for the session today, inshallah. Sheikh yeah, Omar was just wrestling with his charger, but alhamdulillah, I'm back. Okay, um, so, um, so that being said, uh, we said ihsan, number one, in your worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number two, ihsan to creation. Uh, ihsan to your creation. Ihsan to the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, rather. But there's just one last nugget that I want to share about ihsan in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لِلَّذِينَ أَحْسَنُ الْحُسْنَ وَزِيَادَةً To those who show ihsan, they will have al-husna and more. They will have al-husna and more. And this is really beautiful because... Al-Husna is Jannah. But what's more? What's more than Jannah? That is to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so the reward of those, Siddiqa, very good. The reward of those who worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with Ihsan is that they get to see Allah in Jannah. I.e. the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said that Ihsan is to worship Allah as if you see him. So if in the dunya you worship Allah as if you see him, then in Jannah, you get the reward of seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in reality. And that is just beautiful, whatever that thing is called, you know, full circle type stuff. It's beautiful, mashallah. So, uh, ihsan to creation. Let's end with this. Ihsan to creation. Uh, our first level, our first manifestation is ihsan, is showing uh, ihsan to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in worshiping him. Bilqis said surah ayah. Someone can find the surah and the ayah, inshallah ta'ala. Number two, ihsan to creation of Allah. And the people who are most deserving of your ihsan are the people who are closest to you. And so the people who are closest to you absolutely are your parents. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ ihsana That you show ihsan to your relatives. That you show ihsan to your relatives. And then the closer they are to you, the more deserving they are of your ihsan. And I just want to make this uh, point that a lot of times we 
we don't pay attention to the rights of our family or an extended family. And in modernity, it's just very, very easy, even as we are doing good deeds, that we do them to people who are distant to us as opposed to those who are close. And so I might just go on. To, if I need to give sadaqah in the last 10 nights, for example, I might just go and, and jump onto any website and make a donation to some organization somewhere in the world, and that's it. But you might have people in your own family who are deserving of sadaqah. You know, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you know, in Surah Al-Badat, Yatiman the maqraba a orphan, taking care of an orphan who is a relative of yours. Absolutely sponsoring an orphan anywhere in the world is a great, great act. And the Prophet said, that I and those who you know sponsor an orphan are like this in paradise. And he brought his fingers close to one another. But you might have an orphan in your own family. If you talk to your parents, you talk to your aunts and uncles, they might tell you, oh, you have a second cousin over here who you know is an orphan, right? And so the, the idea of taking care of your family members and showing ihsan to your family even before anybody else. You know, um, uh, Ata, you know, the famous Mufassir, he said, for me to spend one dirham, one dirham, one silver coin that I spend in my relatives is more beloved to me than spending a thousand dollars in a drought. For me to go and make a donation of a thousand dollars to support somewhere, people all over the world. He said, it's more beloved to me that I spend a dollar on my family, on those who are close to me. They said, Abu Muhammad, what if they're equal to you in their wealth? What if they're as, as wealthy as you are, your family? He said, even if they're more wealthy than me. Right? The idea of maintaining family ties and taking care of your family and creating bonds of love amongst your family members is very, very important. So that's number two, ihsan to, your crea to the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number three, uh, the third point that I want to mention about Ihsan is that Ihsan is independent of a person's social status. And we see that in the, the surah that describes Ihsan, which is the story of Yusuf alayhi salam. Yusuf alayhi salam is approached twice in the story, in the surah, and he is approached by people who say the same thing. They say, Inna naraka min al They say, we see you to be of the people of Ihsan. And in the first time, Yusuf alayhi salam is a prisoner. And yet the prisoners come to him and they say, can you interpret this dream for us? We see you to be of the Muhsinin. And the second time, Yusuf is in control of the treasures of Egypt. And he's approached by his brother and they say to him, we see you to be of the Muhsinin. And so Yusuf is his ihsan, his qualities of goodness are independent of whether he is a prisoner or whether he's a king, whether he's a prisoner or whether he's a treasurer of Egypt. Your ihsan should be independent of what is going on around you. It should be independent of whether you are an employee or an employer, whether you're rich or whether you are poor, whether you're a student or whether you're a teacher, you're always showing ihsan to those people who are around you. And then the last thing that I'll mention is ihsan, and a great, great manifestation of ihsan, is to do your work well. To do your work well. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Sun Allah alladhi atqana kulla shay. The the creation of Allah, the one who perfected everything. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa says in that hadith, he says, Inna Allah, kat ala kulli shay. Allah has prescribed ihsan over everything. And then he gives two examples of two scenarios where you wouldn't think ihsan is necessary at all. He says, فَإِذَا قَتَلْتُمْ فَأَحْسِنُ الْقِتْلَى وَإِذَا ذَبَحْتُمْ فَأَحْسِنُ الْذِبْحَى He says that if a person is, is about to be executed, execute him well. Don't torture that person. And then number two, if you're going to slaughter an animal, slaughter that animal well. And let them sharpen their blade. You might think this sheep, who cares how it goes out? No, no, no. Ghazala says don't pray in your pajamas, 100%. Absolutely. So the idea here is to show ihsan in the way that you do everything. Show ihsan in the way that you do everything. And that is part of you showing gratitude to Allah. I have a question for you. When you think of hiring Muslim laborers, do you think of Ihsan? Does anybody say, I want to I wanna hire Muslim contractors because they do their work the best? Does anybody say, I want to make Muslim clients, I want my clientele to all be Muslim because they, they are the best customers, they're the best clients, they pay on time the most, they are the best tippers, they are the best... They're the best clients to have. 
In fact, my experience, I'll be honest, is that it's the complete opposite. Muslims who are who are offering services complain about Muslim customers. Muslim customers complain about Muslim, uh, you know, vendors. We complain about each other, and the reason is because both of us are not showing in ihsan. And then when you multiply that, then that's on the local level. When you multiply that on the, on the international level, when you're looking at Muslim goods or when you're looking at goods, whatever those goods are, whether they're electronics or whether they're vehicles or whether they're clothes or whatever, whatever those goods are, do we look at any of these countries of the Muslim world and say, these, this is where I want to get these goods from? Or are we looking at European countries? When you think of engineering, you're thinking of German engineering. When you're thinking of clothes, you're thinking of Italian clothes, right? You're thinking of, of, of that which is best, that which is done with Ihsan. You don't think of the Muslim world. Abdul Medik says, uh, Turkey. Okay, alhamdulillah. We want more. We want more and we need more because we are the ones whom the Prophet wasallam says, has written Ihsan upon everything. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written Ihsan over everything. And in fact, I'll just leave you with this. This is a beautiful story. Al-Manawi, he mentions that Ihsan and that you doing your work well is a manifestation of showing gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Showing gratitude to Allah. And how is that so? He gives the example of a carpenter. There was a carpenter, or he was a tradesman. He wasn't a carpenter per se, but he was a tradesman. This person, he, 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 he has a trade and he makes things. Whatever it is, he's a craftsman. And so someone offered him something. And it was as if he thought like it wasn't that much money. He deserved more. And so what he did was when he made that thing, he cut corners. But only he knew the corners that he cut. Only he knew the corners that he cut. That person receives that product and he's happy about it. Looks great, fantastic, all of that type of stuff. But this man couldn't sleep. He was so bothered. And he said... He rebuilt it. He made it again, but this time he made it perfectly. And then he went and found the guy and he told him and he said, give me the product. And he was like, no, no, it's fine. He's like, I'm happy with it. He's like, no, no, I'm not happy with it. And then he takes it back. He replaces the product. And then he says, whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given knowledge to and then shortchanges it due to lack of payment, they have rejected Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's uh, teaching of them. They have فَقَدْ كَفَرَ مَا عَلَّمُهُ اللَّهِ they have, this, they have shown ingratitude to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taught me. Meaning if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taught me how to do something at an A level and then I offer a C effort just because someone isn't paying me enough, he said, I'm, I'm not showing gratitude to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taught me. And unfortunately, you see that a lot, right? And, and we might sabotage ourselves a lot where we don't give 100% in what we do just because we don't feel like, oh, oh, you know, this guy didn't pay me enough. You do what you do showing gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and recognize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a razzaq. Yes, the idea of work your salary, work your salary, right? These are non-Muslim concepts. Rather, our concept is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written ihsan over everything. It is independent of who this person is and what they're giving me. Okay, you're doing it because of who you are, not because of who they are. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. There's a lot to be said, but I just want to shout out one last person uh, on this topic of Ihsan, and that's Sheikh Muhammad al-Sharif, rahimahullah. Uh, Sheikh Muhammad, uh, for those of you who don't know him, he's the founder of Al-Maghrib, and this is a person who loved uh, Ihsan and lived Ihsan. And Al-Maghrib in and of itself is a manifestation in our core, in our ethos, is this idea of Ihsan, and that is because of his energy. He wanted to change the way that Islam was taught in the West. We have to go back 20 years. And it was just haphazard lectures in masajid and, you know, it's just never ending halaqahs and things like that. And so he made it a point to move out of the masajid back in the day and teach in university classrooms and hire PowerPoint, uh, you know, graphic designers to make our posters and just do everything differently and bring it as make it as professionally as possible because his slogan was always Islam deserves better, Islam deserves better. And that wasn't just with regards to al-Maghrib, but I'm speaking about the person here. Even when it came to something as simple as khutbas, you know, he he would write out his khutbas like they were articles. You could imagine the khatib, and we've all experienced this where you, the khutbah, you know, you experience the khutbah and you're like, did this guy even prepare? 
he would prepare and he would write out articles and then he would post them on on khutbah.com. And I remember being a teenager going and, and getting those khutbahs and, and, you know, reteaching them in my local communities. But again, doing it with Ihsan. And then when it came to audio, you know, he would be recording lectures in a studio setting and he created a company called Iman Rush to again, raise the level of, of the delivery of our audio uh, experience when it came to Islamic content. And this was all 20 years ago, right? And so that's the idea of how do you do things with Ihsan? How do you do things with Ihsan? And then, alhamdulillah, until now, Al Maghrib continues to ask that question. And I hope that you see the Ihsan in all of the things that we're doing. And I want to encourage you all, inshallah, as we're in the last 10 nights, to show Ihsan. I don't know, I'm sure Hafsa made a plug at the beginning, but I just want to make my own plug. And that's to support Al Maghrib specifically um, in these last 10 nights and support the. Uh, to support the work that we're doing. We're really excited always every year about championing and bringing things to the next level. And what I'm excited about most personally is launching a studio here in Houston, inshallah ta'ala, because I'm tired of traveling to other cities to record these series. I'm not going back to Dallas. I know everybody loves the masjid, mashallah, the Soto House of Peace that the Names of Allah series was recorded in. But I would much rather like to record in our studio here in uh, Houston, inshallah ta'ala, with Sheikh Walid and Sheikh Kamal and Ustaz Asara and all of the al Maghrib instructors that are here in Houston, inshallah ta'ala. So make sure that you support, let other people support as well. Jazakumullah khair, everybody. I uh, I only made that last statement just so I can take a little bit more of Ustaz Taymiyyah's time, but Jazakumullah khair, everybody, and I'll, I'll hand over the microphone to her, inshallah. Jazakumullah khair, Sheikh Ammar Shukri, as always. Um, actually, you know what? I think because we've scared you straight from the first session, you've been very timely since. So we should have done this with all the instructors, mashallah. Um, I know we, we try to give some time to questions. So I've received a couple questions from people in the chat. Um, if anyone else wants to sneak it in, to please send me a private message so that I can uh, see it a bit more easily, Sheikh, before you go. If we can just take a couple of them, that would be lovely, inshallah. Um, the first question I have submitted to me is, how do we manage the expectation to carry out a job with Ihsan, with the tiredness we feel of doing so for a long time, slash wanting to take a break and beginning to fall short on the actions? Uh, how do you, uh, I think that comes with honesty of setting expectations. So that comes with expectations. You know, there have been lots of times with people where I've requested things from them and they simply respond and say, you know, I'm sorry, I don't have the capacity to do that right now. And it's, it's a little bit of a zing, right? When someone says no to you, it's a little bit of a zing, but over time you end up respecting this person. You respect that person and you respect the idea that they are honest about their capacity. And when they have, uh, when they can't do something, you know, they, they have that boundary because when they do do something, they perform. And so I think that's a, a, a very healthy and important um, skill that people need to learn, which is if I can do it with Ihsan, I can do it. And if I can't do it with Ihsan, then I'm not going to lie to you and tell you that I'm going to do it only to, be, to, to, to offer something that is subpar. Um, the second question I have submitted is, um, how do you maintain Ihsan with family members who constantly misinterpret your actions? That is too general. I don't know what that means. Fair enough. Um, the next is, okay, well, there's another one on family. So we'll do, how can we show Ihsan with family when we feel we are not being treated correctly? Um, Ihsan has nothing to do with how you're being treated. It's not tit for tat. Ihsan is for you to do well with those who aren't necessarily doing that. You know, when it comes to connecting the ties of kinship, a man told the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, you know, I have a person who, you know, um, I uh, I show them, you know, I show them uh, warmth and they show me warmth. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Ihsan is, uh, he said, you know, connecting the ties of kinship is not al-mukafa'a, it's not reciprocity but it is that you connect with those who don't connect with you. And so Ihsan is that I show, you know, that type of magnanimous nature to those who otherwise wouldn't. That's where Ihsan lies. And so that's the challenge. Perfect. And then finally, someone's asking the third point that you made about independent of social status. Could you explain that or clarify that, please? Uh, meaning Yusuf's goodness, he didn't become, he didn't absorb like negative qualities just because he was in a prison. He did it. He didn't let the environment corrupt him. He was surrounded by prisoners. He was. He might have been surrounded by criminals, but he didn't let that corrupt him, and make his nature 
you know, criminal. In fact, they recognized his goodness, even in a prison. And then when Yusuf becomes the treasurer of Egypt, he doesn't let that power corrupt him either. So he doesn't have the, the negative qualities that come with power and come with, you know, those qualities are also sometimes even worse than the qualities of a petty criminal because you can get away with everything and you can abuse people and you can harm people and you can yell at people and scold people and curse people, right? You hear, you hear those stories from people in power all the time, how they become uh, corrupt because of their power. And so they see Yusuf a.s. to not have any of that also. So uh, again, you showing ihsan and goodness, whether you are in power or whether you are overpowered, either way. Beautiful. Jazakumullah khair, Sheikh Ammar, for that lovely session on Ihsan. I think uh, someone said it best in the chat that that was a paradigm shift. If we felt attacked, let's hopefully we felt inspired by the end of the session as well. Someone, I know quite a few people related to that pajamas comment as well, alhamdulillah. Um, and I'm looking forward to us getting a chance to reflect on it. As Sheikh said, please do, as as investing in, in an organization that that operates on Ihsan, please do support Amagrib through amagrib.org forward slash donate um, and be part of that journey, inshallah. With us, Sheikh, any final words? Before I know we're going to see you very soon, inshallah. But before we close off for today's session with you, uh, there's a lot of requests for a poem, but I don't really have a, a poem. A that I, poem? I don't have an Ihsan poem, but I'll just say, uh, as far as a poem goes, um, just very briefly. Ah, man, I'm really out. But let's just uh, let's do this one very quickly, as I, I try to rack my brain for a poem here. Uh, okay, so this poem goes A divine rebuke cast in a shade of love. Hasn't the time come for those who believe that their hearts be softened to the remembrance of the above? Hasn't the time come for them to stop the play? Haven't they had their fill of chasing dunya in every way? Haven't they seen that all the faces and places they confuse for oasis are mirages that fade, that none ever stay? Are they done chasing falsehood? Are they ready for the truth that will give them happiness in this life and the next eternal youth? The seeker knows that in the remembrance of God is a lifeline to the heart and a tongue moist with his remembrance speaks light into the dark. That is from uh, So that's a reflection on that. Jazakumullah khair, guys. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Jazakumullah khair, Sheikh Ammar. As he likes to say, va, va. Drop your whatever those emojis are he asked for in the chat, inshallah. <laughs> Um, that was an amazing end to an amazing session. I hope that you guys all enjoyed it. We're going to have Sheikh Ammar with us again in a couple of days, alhamdulillah, um, on the topic of generosity, inshallah. So look out for that. I think that's on the 27th night. We'll actually have we'll have a special session with him then. So uh, do mark your Friday uh, on your calendar that you'll spend a little extra time. It'll be a larger session, but we're looking forward to that with Sheikh Ammar Shukri. And to, that was, of course, our 23rd day of Ramadan 360. Tomorrow, we're going to have Sheikh Omar Hadruj on love, hope, and fear. But before that, you guys now have the opportunity to reflect. And before we even get into that, I want to shout out, like, I think Ramadan is such a perfect time for us to practice Ihsan, especially as those of us who, who you know, live in diaspora, who live in, amongst non-Muslims. I feel like I can sell which non-Muslims that I see around me who have ex have positive experiences with Muslims because they get excited with Ramadan. They, they're they the ones who keep an eye on the calendar. They, win us they wish us Ramadan Mubarak. And then there's the ones who are like a little, they don't know what to, to think about it, subhanAllah. So we should be that influence. Like I have my sister who's, uh, you know, creating like little gift packets for all the neighbors on the, you know, on the floor to make sure that they feel that, that sweetness of Ramadan even as Ramadan is ending. So there's still plenty of time to have that impact and with Eid upcoming as well to have people excited to have Muslims as part of the community because they know that whatever, you know, that, that, that we share in that celebration and that we're, we're, we're incorporating them in that as well. Alhamdulillah. With that said, I do want to shout out once again, the Amagrib slash donate camp campaign. Once again, Sheikh Omar said it best that this is something that we've been working uh, towards for 22 years, making sure that every single project, every single effort that we put out there, whether it's a Tajweed learning platform, whether it's uh, a concise 
library of courses on all the essential topics that a Muslim needs to know, faith essentials, whether it's an online class on a topic that we want to make sure that you come out of it knowing every single answer on that topic, feeling confident, feeling empowered with that knowledge, whatever it is, whether it's an in-person experience or a trip that we approach it with Ihsan and you are part of that journey and that legacy um, when you're you're donating, you're donating and joining us in that experience. Alhamdulillah. Um, and that, with that said, I still hit that exactly the 45 minute mark. Ustad Taymiya, I want to bring you back on for our 23rd day of Quran reflections in a row. What a marathon it's been. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Ustada, how are you doing today? Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. MashaAllah, it's 5.45. SubhanAllah. MashaAllah. Jazakallah. Great timing. Allah, if you're still here. <laughs> yes, alhamdulillah. Um, I want to say, Ustada, Sheikh Amar touched a little bit. Any advice that you have? I know it's like the t- last 10 nights are going to be done in a blink. And we're, we've already covered three nights, subhanAllah, or two nights. I don't even know anymore. Um, what any advice going into the final few and how to maximize our efforts, inshallah? I think honestly, um, these days what's really difficult is to focus in worship because we're all so sad, yeah, and so angry, mm-hmm. and we constantly want to find out about what's happening, what's the latest, is yeah. there any good news, is there any improvement? And I think in that we I have personally caught myself mm-hmm. spending too much time just worrying and mm-hmm. thinking, or watching clips, or like, or, or watching, or checking the, that rabbit hole. Yeah, yeah. And so I have to keep reminding myself that no, this at this time, what is needed is worship and dua. Mm-hmm. So I am literally physically separating myself from my phone. Like I leave it upstairs, I leave it downstairs, mm-hmm. so that I don't use it. Right. Uh, and then I, I allow myself that, okay, after I'm done for the car, after mm-hmm. I'm done this, after I'm done that, then I'll go check. Uh, but I, I, I think these days it's really difficult yeah, because yeah, it's, and it's understandable. Yeah. We're all grieving. We're all upset. Mm-hmm. And I think the battle right now is really with your own nafs. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, uh, you know how in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that perhaps you would kill yourself out of grief. Yeah right? That these people don't believe. And I feel like we're grieving. Our, our grieving and our worrying these days is at that level. Yeah. That it's 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 coming to a point where it's actually unhealthy, mm-hmm. right? And of, of, of course, we, what else can we do? We, 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 of course, we're going to be sad. We're going to be upset, mm-hmm. right? Uh, any, the, the reason is still there. And mm-hmm. every day we have a- another more, reason to be yeah, more upset, yeah, to be yeah. more sad, right? But again, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is is a perfect example for us, right? For him in Makkah, uh, the opposition, the persecution was only intensifying by the day, yeah, right? And what what is it that he was told in the Quran? Allah subhanahu wa taala tells him to increase in his tasbih. Right in his remembrance of Allah, in his glorification, right, and to increase in his prayer, to increase in his recitation of the Quran, and 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 increase in du'a. So these days you have to force yourself that I have to make dhikr, I have to make du'a, I have to recite the Quran, I have to pray because this is what will actually help. Yeah, this is what will actually make a difference. Subhanallah. Wow, Ustada, I did not expect that answer with that question. You that was that hit the nail on the head, subhanAllah. Jazakumullah khair. Looking mm-hmm. forward to our reflections on today, today on the topic of Ihsan. Let's jump right in. Bismillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi everyone. A'udhu billahi min shaitan al rajim. Bismillah al rahman al rahim. Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulihi al kareem. So, Ihsan. Ihsan, um, the translation that I like for Ihsan is excellence. Okay. Uh, and I'll tell you why. Inshallah, you'll understand why. Uh, the word ihsan is from the root uh, hasan, hasinun. And this root occurs just under 200 times in the Quran. You say, so and so ahsana, meaning that he did that which is hasan. Okay. If someone does ihsan, it means that they're doing something that is hasan. Now, what is hasan? Hassan is anything that is good, anything that is pleasing. So if someone does a good deed, if someone smiles, if someone gives charity, if someone passes 
uh, water to you, right? If someone is is praying with khushur, if someone is uh, you know treating their parents with respect, if someone is saying a kind word, all of these are what good things, right? So when someone does something good, you say they did ihsan. All right, and ihsan is the opposite of isa'a. Isa'a is to do what is bad, and ihsan is to do what is good. Now, what exactly is good? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, wa ahsinu, do good, because in Allah yuhibbul muhsinin, Allah loves the people who do good. Now, again, what exactly is good? Well, all of the religion of Allah is good, because in Islam, Right? Either you are worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you're performing an act of worship like salah, like dhikr, right? Or you are doing good to Allah's creation. So all of Allah's religion is good. So anything that is religious, whether it is that you are smiling at someone, you're giving sadaqah, you are praying to rakah, voluntary prayer, you are reciting the Quran. All of this is ihsan, okay? Now, ihsan is also used to describe an action as uh, as excellent, meaning when it is done in an excellent way, right? Like, for example, if you ask me for water, I can just toss the water bottle to you, right? Or I can bring you water, right? And I can offer it to you nicely. I can pass it on to you in a respectful way. And there's a difference between the way you do things. So when you do something in, a, in an excellent way, that is ihsan. And the Prophet wasallam, when he was asked about what ihsan is, he said that you worship Allah as though you see him. Now, the thing is that when you, uh, or uh, uh, sorry, that you worship Allah as though you see him. And if not that, then at least you bring to mind that he is watching you. Now, as human beings, this is something very normal, that when we know we are being watched, what happens to us? All of a sudden, our actions become more proper and more beautiful, isn't it? Even, uh, you know, when it comes to putting your shoes outside the masjid, if it's just you, you might just throw them off to the side. But if there's somebody behind you, then what happens? You put them neatly on the side, you pick them up and you, you know, put them on the shoe rack. Uh, not that you should be doing it for the sake of people, but it's a very normal thing that when you know you're being watched, you tend to do things in a better way. So the Prophet ﷺ is teaching us that ihsan is that you worship Allah as though you see him or that he is watching you, meaning everything that you do do it in an excellent way, in a beautiful way, right? Uh, why? Because Allah is watching you. Now, another uh, angle uh, for of ihsan, Imam Raghib explains that ihsan is different from in'am, okay? Uh, in'am is that you, you, you are good to someone. You give them a gift. You give them something that is, uh, that, that, that is beneficial, all right? Like, like even food, okay? But ihsan is more than in'am, because in in'am, you're just doing good to someone else. In ihsan, you are also doing good to yourself. In'am is all about benefiting others. But in ihsan, you are benefiting others and you're also benefiting yourself. Right? Because in ahsantum, ahsantum li anfusikum. If you do good, you are doing good for the benefit of your own self. Right When you give sadaqah to someone, it appears as though you are benefiting them. But in reality, who are you benefiting first? Yourself. And then ihsan is, uh, is, the, is, is, is the step after adl. It, it surpasses adl. Okay? Adl is that you give only what is due and you take only what is due. So for example, when it comes to your zakat, actually... Um, uh, let's say you, you, um, you, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, how about this? Let's go back to zakat. Okay. You have to give your zakat. Let's say $500 is due as zakat. Okay. Now, for you, giving $500 is what? Is required, right? You have to do that. 
But when you give more, okay, more than what is due, that is what? Ihsan. Is, if you don't give more, are you sinful? No way. If you just give $500, you have fulfilled your obligation. Alhamdulillah. But when you give more than that, then that is Ihsan. Okay. Likewise, when it comes to, you know, your your obligations towards other people. Islamically, for instance, a man has certain responsibilities towards his wife. A wife has certain responsibilities towards her husband. Right. Uh, and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has mentioned those. But then when you do more than what is required of you just to benefit someone, just to make their life easier for them, this is what? Ihsan. So Ihsan is more than Adl. Okay. Now, who exactly are the Muhsineen? In the Quran, we see that Muhsineen are, first of all, the people of Taqwa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah al dhariyat verses 15 to 19. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna al muttaqina fi jannatin wa uyun. Indeed, the people of Taqwa will be in gardens and springs. And among the gardens of paradise, in the gardens of, of paradise where there are springs. And they will be receiving whatever their Lord gives them. Hey, imagine they're just constantly receiving the rewards that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them. And Allah says, Innahum kanu qabla thalika muhsineen. They used to be before that people of Ihsan. So muttaqeen will be in paradise. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that these muttaqeen were who? Muhsineen. Okay. Now, who were they? What did they do? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes that. Kanu qalilam min al ma yahja'oon. In the night, they used to sleep very little. Why? Because they were standing in prayer, calling upon Allah, begging for His favor and His forgiveness and His mercy. Wabil ashari hum yastaghfirun. And at the time of suhoor, they would be seeking forgiveness from Allah. And he, at the at the end of the night, just before Fajr, they would be seeking forgiveness from Allah. وَفِي أَمْوَالِهِمْ حَقٌ لِلسَّائِلِ وَالْمَحْرُومِ And in their property was a was a, a a share for who for those who ask and also those who are deprived and they, and they don't ask. So this means that muhsinin are who those who worship Allah, but which worship? Is it just the obligations? No, it's the voluntary worship as well. Because the night prayer, qiyamul layl, is not wajib, right? It's it's not obligatory. It's voluntary. So they're doing more than what is required. This is ihsan. And then in their property is a fixed share. You know, they, they certainly give from their property to those who ask and also those who are deprived. You need, because there are some people who, who will come and ask you, and then there are others who you know they need more and they will never ask. So they give to others, and this is their ihsan towards people. Then we see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in Surah Al-Mursalat, إِنَّ الْمُتَّقِينَ فِي ظِلَالٍ وَعُيُونَ That the people of taqwa will be in shades and among springs. وَفَوَاكِهَا مِمَّا يَشْتَهُونَ And they will have whatever fruits that they desire. Kulu وَشْرَبُوا هَنِيئًا بِمَا كُنْتُمْ تَعْمَلُونَ Eat and drink to your delight because of what you used to do. إِنَّا كَذَلِكَ نَجْزِ الْمُحْسِنِينَ Allah says, this is how we give reward to those who do ihsan. So who are muhsinin? They are muttaqin. All right. Then we see that the people who, do, who have sabr, people of patience, they're also described as muhsinin. In Surah Ali Imran, verses 146 to 148, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wallahu sabirin. Allah loves those who are patient. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned some more qualities. And then at the end of the next verse, he says, He loves Wallahu yuhibbul muhsinin. Because sabr means what? That you don't quit. That you 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 don't give up. You you don't become weak, right? Uh you you carry on for the sake of Allah. Uh, then we see muhsineen are who? Those who who say what is good. 
Okay, so this shows us that ihsan is not just in worship, it is not just in your actions, it is also in your speech. In Surah Al-Ma'idah, verse 83, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَأَثَابَهُمُ اللَّهُ بِمَا قَالُوا Allah rewarded them because of what they said. What is the reward that Allah gave them? جَنَّاتٍ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِهَا الْأَنْهَارُ خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا Paradise. وَذَلِكَ جَزَاءُ الْمُحْسِنِينَ And that is the reward of who? Those who do ihsan. So who are those who do ihsan? Those who say what is good. Those who say what is true. So ihsan is in speech, in actions, in worship, in our dealings with people. Now we see that in the Quran, ihsan is described as, again, isifa min sifatillah, an attribute among the attributes of Allah. Allah Azza wa Jal is al-muhsin, the doer of good, the one who is extremely generous. The one who does not have to give us anything. But he gives us more than what we can even ask him. If you count the blessings of Allah, you could not count them. You wouldn't be able to. Is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala required? Does he owe all of these blessings to us? No. This is all his ihsan. Right? And then we see that in, in different uh, ways Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does even more favor to towards his slaves. You know, like in uh, uh, like Yusuf alayhi salam said, وَقَدْ أَحْسَنَ بِي Allah did ihsan to me and he was extremely good to me when he brought me out of the prison. Uh, and, and, and then we see that in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us to do ihsan. In Surah Al-Nahl, verse number 90, إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَأْمُرُ بِالْعَدْلِ وَالْإِحْسَانِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands you with justice and also with ihsan. So give what is due, okay? Take what is yours, but then also go the extra mile. Don't just be focused on what is my right, what is their right, what do I owe, what do they owe me, and then, you know, just be business-like. No, go the extra mile, do ihsan also. And in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala especially tells us to do ihsan towards our parents. وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانَ Five times in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us to do ihsan with our parents. And ihsan with people is in how you speak to them. It is in, in doing acts of service for them. It is in taking care of them. It is in doing favors to them. It is in spending your property on them. It is in using your position, your knowledge, your expertise, your status to benefit them. So ihsan towards parents and also to other people like in Surah Al-Baqarah, وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا وَبِذِي الْقُرْبَى وَالْيَتَامَى وَالْمَسَاكِينَ Do ihsan to parents and to the relatives and the orphans and those in need. Then we see in the Quran that we are actually told to do ihsan in everything that we do. Not just when you know, things are good and convenient, but also in any difficult, tricky situations like divorce. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Baqarah, الطلاق مرتان That divorce that is revocable is only two times. فَإِمْسَاكُمْ بِمَعْرُوفٍ أَوْ تَسْرِيحٌ بِإِحْسَانٍ Then either you retain the wife, you keep her with you, or you let her go with ihsan. Imagine you're parting ways and you let her go how? With ihsan, subhanAllah. Ihsan is also required when, when paying blood money. Imagine someone accidentally kills another Muslim, all right? And then they're paying the blood money. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَأَدَاءٌ إِلَيْهِ بِإِحْسَانٍ Give the payment with ihsan. So if ihsan is required in such tricky situations, then what do you think about everyday, you know, interactions, and especially times when, uh, you know, we're happy, we're celebrating, uh, where, uh, you know, things are normal. Then we see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises reward for ihsan. What is the reward for ihsan? The first reward is that you benefit yourself. In Surah Al-Isra, verse 7, in ahsantum, ahsantum li anfusikum. When you do good, when you do ihsan, you benefit. You benefit in this world. 
in Surah Al-Zumar, verse number 10, Allah says, لِلَّذِينَ أَحْسَنُوا فِي هَذِهِ الدُّنْيَا حَسَنًا Those who do ihsan, in this world, they will have good. They receive the love of Allah and the help of Allah. In Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 195, الْمُحْسِنِينَ Allah loves those people who do ihsan. Those who do ihsan receive the help of Allah. In Surah Al-Ankabut, Ayah 69, Allah lama'al muhsinin. Allah is with those who do good. Surah Al-A'raf, verse 56, Inna rahmatallahi qareebu min al muhsinin. The mercy of Allah is very close to those who do good. Those who do ihsan, their efforts are not wasted because sometimes we feel like we're just constantly benefiting, constantly giving, constantly being generous, and we don't receive anything from the other person. When you do ihsan, you're doing it for the sake of Allah, and Allah sees what you do, and He will not allow your efforts to be wa wasted. In Surah Al-Kahf, verse 30, Allah says, Inna la nudi'u ajra man ahsana amala. We will not allow to be wasted the reward of those who do good. And those who do ihsan will be Freed from fear and grief. Bala man aslama wajhahu lillahi wa huwa muhsin. The one who does ihsan. They will have their reward with Allah. Wala khawfun alayhim wala hum yahzanun. They will have no fear nor will they grieve. And that will be in paradise where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give them more than what they ever imagined. Lilladina ahsanu al husna wa ziyada. And that is, uh, of course, the, the reward in paradise. And the greatest reward, seeing Allah Azza wa Jal. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to help us to worship Him with Ihsan and give us a tawfiq to do Ihsan, to do good, to benefit others no matter where we go. Allahumma ameen. Allahumma a'inni ala dhikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadatik. Oh Allah, help me to remember you, to uh, thank you, and to worship you in an excellent way. Allahumma ameen. Let's hear from you now, inshallah. I'm sorry it took so long. I wanted to cover all of these points. Uh, and I didn't realize no, I went over time. Sorry about that. No, you don't have to apologize. It's your time, Ustada. But alhamdulillah, we ended on time. So we still have plenty of time to, for reflections. I see Afifa has her hand up. So let's hear from Afifa first. Bismillah, go ahead. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Bismillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulullah. I want to uh, share about Yusuf alayhi salam, that he became uh, more wealthy later. But before, because sometimes we think that ihsan is just in your wealth, but it's not just in your wealth. It's also in your character and your manners and your behavior. And I think Yusuf alayhi salam had ihsan first in his character and in his own manners and behavior. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. That is so beautiful. Jazakallah khairan for sharing. Biyakallahu khair. Beautiful. Next we'll take Taymiya, inshallah. Taymiya, go right ahead. Bismillah. Give it one more try. There you go. Bismillah. I was going to say the same thing. She said, that's it. That's all. Thank you. Jazakallah khair. Um, I had my hand up as well. Actually, no, I'll, I'll wait another person in line, inshallah. Paris, let's hear from you, and then inshallah, I'll share a reflection. Assalamu alaikum. Alaykum assalam. So the people of Ihsan are so excellent. As you mentioned, that after a night filled with prayer, they end it seeking forgiveness. So their excellence doesn't blind them to their shortcomings. And it isn't a cause for them not to be humble. And when we pray our obligatory prayers, we say astaghfirullah three times. Mm -hmm. But for them, after a night of non-obligatory prayers, a night filled with non-obligatory prayers, then they end it with istighfar. So that's just a testament to their excellence. Inshallah. Jazakallah khairan. That's beautiful. Jazakallah khairan. MashaAllah. Well said. Let's take uh, Brother Abdurrahman as well. Go right ahead, Brother Abdurrahman. Uh, yes, this reminds me of the story. It's a famous parable of a carpenter who's on his last day at work or his last assignment at work, right? And the carpenter is told by his boss, there's just one more house we'd like you to build. And he says, okay, but his heart's not in it anymore. And so he builds the house, but he cuts corners. He doesn't really do his best work that he's done over the years. He goes back to his boss and says he's done. And then the boss gives him the key and says, this house is for you. You just build your own house. And he realizes, why didn't I put my effort into it? And when I think about that story, I think about for us, 
that's what we're doing for our houses in Jannah, right? We're building our own uh, abodes. Mm -hmm. And when we take those shortcuts in Salah, we take those shortcuts in Wudu, we take those shortcuts in Sadaqah, it's our own house that we're that we're shortchanging, right? It's no one else's. Subhanallah. Jazakallah khairan. Jazakallah khairan. Really, really well said. Um, mm -hmm. I'll take the next one, inshallah. Um, so uh, this is an example, or, or there's someone in my life, my brother actually, is, I think Saad Samia, you know him, um, mm -hmm. Usama, who mashallah shows ihsan in everything that he does to the point where it causes him personal like loss or sacrifice. And that, that's the test of it is, is if you have to lose out or if you have to sacrifice financially or in other ways to make sure that you do everything to the best of your ability and that you're not that that you can feel comfortable with yourself when you go to sleep at night. So he had a small business for a couple of years and mashallah, he would like all his reviews, again, working mostly with non-Muslims and this and that would be by his extreme honesty and the extreme ihsan that he did in everything that he, uh, in every interaction, every transaction that he had, that he did. And a lot of times, small businesses, sometimes they get targeted by scammers and people who are just trying to take advantage. And they're, you know, so I remember one time he had somebody contacted him like months after receiving a product or service. And like, you know, there was no issues or whatever with it. And like coming up, like making up something that was wrong with it and asking him to fix it and all that kind of stuff. And he just like listened to it. He's like, you know, gave it a proper response of like, you know, this seems unlikely or whatever. They pushed back and they said, no, 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 they insisted. And he's like, okay, I'll take you for your word. I'll give you a full refund of whatever you gave and whatever. And the person got so embarrassed. <laughs> And they're like, okay, never mind. I didn't, you know, no, I didn't actually, it's fine. It's, you know, whatever, because they didn't expect it to someone to just give up. And it was not a good time for him to be giving out refunds. I was like, I was shocked. I was like, that was a horrible financial decision. But subhanAllah, seeing that, like, you know, I don't, I don't want to be, you know, standing in front of Allah subhanAllah and, and be accountable for any dollar, anything that could potentially even put me at risk. I want to make sure that any interaction that I have, if whether it's a financial one, whether it's otherwise, it's done with excellence. It, mashallah, it showed through, and it was such a form of da'wah for the, those we interacted with during that entire time, subhanAllah. Mashallah. So, mashallah. subhanAllah. It comes at personal sacrifice, but it's worth it. The next person that I have in line is Nihmat. Go ahead, Nihmat. Go ahead. Sorry, before Nihmat, yes. uh, you know, it comes at a personal sacrifice, absolutely. This is why the reward of Ihsan is so great. That's so true. Right? Uh, when you, Ihsan is not just reciprocation, as we learned earlier. It's when someone is, talking down at you, someone is raising their voice at you, they are being condescending, they're being disrespectful, and you still maintain your decorum, you know, your you speak properly. This is your ihsan. So Allah, Allah knows, and Allah loves the ihsan that you do, and he will not waste your effort, right? Inna la nudhiru ajra man ahsana amala. Mehmet, go ahead. Let's hear from you as well. Uh, Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, so this reminds me of what is going on currently in the world, the ihsan among the people of Gaza, people of Palestine. I feel like how uh, whatever situation they are in, uh, in, the, in that calamity, they are able to worship Allah at, at their best. And they were able to worship, even though they do, they lost their body parts, they lost people, they're able to worship with Ihsan. And I feel like even the children are like uh, reciting Quran and they're still with the Quran all the time. And where are we? I don't think I am anywhere close to like even a speck of dust or whatever, because it's just so mesmerizing and the entire world is like inspired by their ihsan and there are a lot of rewards because of uh, the resilience and the ihsan they are so showing so that's something which is very inspirational to me and it's something that i can never even imagine it's something beyond my imagination i feel subhanallah mm -hmm. very well said Nimit. the next person let's take is ragad and i think we can make that the final reflection go right ahead ragad so your reflection has reminded me of a dealing I had in Amra. We were shopping and I really wanted like Palestinian clothes and, uh, you know, was into like everything that's going on. And we were shopping at this shop and the guy's like, oh, are you guys Palestinian? I said, no, we're Syrian. And he's like, oh, I love dealing with Syrians because they're like his, I, alhamdulillah, like his um, opinion was very high. And he was like, you know, I buy um, a lot of my merchandise from them and they're very honest and they're on time. And it's just, it's a great dealing that I have. So he's like, please pick anything you want in the store. I'm going to give you a great discount. And so like, alhamdulillah, they dealt with him with Ahsan and just his dealing. We didn't even have to, you know, usually you have to barter and you have to, you know, do everything that you have to. And he just by himself, he was like, no, 
just because you guys are from that place and I have a good experience and they're good people, I'm going to give you a good discount. So it's good to do like sometimes just, you know, secondhand, you can get something good out of it. So subhanAllah. Subhanallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes a promise that we we will give more to those who do good. And that more doesn't always come to you. It it goes to the people around you. Subhanallah. All right, inshallah, we'll conclude here for today. Jazakumullah khair, Ustad Taymiya. And to all of you who shared some lovely reflections today, I love Faseen's comment here is that Ihsan snowballs. Indeed, it does. Um, as we wrap up, I just wanted to quickly shout out one of the, the first and the best examples of Ihsan that I've seen uh, in my experience, especially within the Muslim community, has been, mashallah, the Maghrib volunteers. So if anyone has ever taken a Maghrib class in person, I know Brother Abdurrahman is the head of a of the Qabila in Ohio, and Ustaz Amiya has taught us around uh, the globe, mashallah, is uh, one thing that was always humbling and mind-boggling for me to see is, is a class is, it can be a simple experience. You can find a hall anywhere. You can go to an Islamic event in multi, m- many places, and they'll just they'll let you come in they'll let you come out we'll just we'll, we'll speed through the experience and then it, it is what it is and i found that as a child going to amagri classes the amount of ihsan from the very beginning you walking into the hall the registration the way that you were greeted the way that you were that everything was organized and the presentations and the humor and the interactions with the instructors mashallah it was just mind-blowing how much thought and planning and detail went into every little aspect of even the small things that people maybe would not put that much attention or put that much, uh, you know, thought or care into. And that is something that has been such an honor to work with them. And one of the ways that when you support a Maghrib is you support the ability for us to, to, to thank them, to give back to them on the ground, to make sure that they get that, that they get positive classes and experiences as well. Alhamdulillah. And it's just such a beautiful community to be a part of. So I'm always super grateful. I get the honor of working very directly with all the teams globally and interacting with these beautiful personalities who gift of them that they're own time and their money and their energy just to contribute to the dawah and to make the experience better for other students of knowledge so when you're making the offer the instructors and the staff and everything don't forget the amagri volunteers in those da'as and may Allah accept from them and, and grant them all jannat al firdos and allow you all to meet and to to benefit from them in this world and the hereafter i mean yarbal alameen with that let's close off that was day number 23 of ramadan 360 subhanallah last week coming up inshallah tomorrow is going to be sheikh omar hadruj on the topic of love hope and fear don't miss out join us live we'll see you guys same time same place and of course please always keep the people of Palestine in your du'as may Allah keep them happy and healthy and safe and we'll see you soon assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi